Oh, that's better. What's going on, you bunch of heretics? Grab your paint pots, grab your recaf, and let's get some paint on that ever-growing pile of potential. It's here. The heresy is my therapy. Slap chop tutorials. Today's episode is going to be more on a bit of a slap chop 2.0. I've been working with some different pieces, some new brushes, playing around with some techniques within slap chop. And today I kind of want to give you guys a bit of a slap chop 2.0 to make your slap chop models really pop and shine. Many complaints within the slap chop world is that, oh, it's quite dull, it's grim dark. And it is, for good reason. It's the technique, it's what it does. But today is about kind of making the most even more about how you can make your slap chop really kind of pop, make it even better, and some simple tweaks that may add a few more minutes onto your slap chop. Um, however, for that extra bit of shine, that bit of pop, I think it works out quite nicely. So, with that in mind, something I do want to say, I please, 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 this is not a paid partnership. Um, this is absolutely not a paid partnership. This is uh, something I've been using. The brushes that I'll be using this are from Army Painter. Uh, the dry brush army painter brushes. I really really am loving them. That's me not just saying it I genuinely have really enjoyed using it and it's helped me develop this new Kind of basing of of the slap chop. So yes, I just want to say that just straight away Just in case someone's going will you miss me? You guys know what I mean. So yes, and um, without further ado, let's get to it Right so um, very quickly, uh, so few, three big changes that I've made so far. First of all, yes, I have been using the Army Painter dry brushes, as we said on the intro there. The Army Painter dry brushes, I absolutely love using these. Um, they've been really, really good for that initial base dry brush, and we'll go with that in a second. Second thing, for a lot of the models now, I'm starting to use a, obviously we've got the black, then I put another base colour on, the one that's predominantly that colour. A lot of time it's going to be of a, say for like your likes of your space marines and stuff, or ultramarines, etc., or, or crimson fist, like a dark blue. Um, I'm going to use a crew today, which is predominantly sort of like green and reds and neutrals. So I'm going to use a brown for that, a real dark brown, specifically Rhinox Hide. And thirdly, I've actually switched, 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 switched to Lamian Medium instead of water. Um, that seems to have, I don't know what it is, but that seems to have helped it. So they're the three main sort of ones that I've decided to, to change up a little bit. Yeah, Lamy and Medium seems to work really nicely instead of water. And again, we'll just go through how we're going to use that um, in this video today. So yes, they're the three big changes. We're going to go through them now and show you how they kind of um, work. And we're going to use this, uh, this crute from the uh, Kin Band Kill Team, um, and also because the crew have been released, so I thought, eh, why not, makes sense. So yes, without further ado, so that was quite a bit of a run, but they're the big changes that I've made, and uh, we'll get into that now. So yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay guys, so, um, we're in. We're starting the tutorial. Hopefully you can all see that okay. So yes, first things first, what I really want to talk about guys is um, the brushes that I'm using. Uh, the brushes that I'm using is a big bit of a change. Um, and of course, uh, I'm gonna base this entire model with, um, yeah, with Rhinox Hide. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Um, obviously I'm not gonna use Lama Medium with this. This is just gonna be a straight um, water, water job. Uh, so pretty, pretty um, simple enough there, guys. Uh, so yes, let's find our basing brush. Put that down a little bit. And like I say, we're just going to apply a nice thin, thin coat. Oh, right, so that's a bit too thin. That's bloody way too thin. Oh no. Poor start to the video already there, Dan. Uh, yeah, a real thin coat um, of this onto our 
onto our model. All right, so a nice thin coat onto our model, just all over. And all this is going to do, it's just going to help. Um, I found that the black is great, but at times it's just a bit too dark um, for what we're what we're trying to achieve some, on some things. So with this very neutral, neutral type colour, it just kind of helps with the model to kind of bring out that stuff. So yeah, so first things first we're going to do, we're just going to base the model with this Rhinox hide, nice thin layer of Rhinox hide pretty much all over the model. Okay. Right. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our um, model. As you can see, we've got our model all done in that sort of brown hue. And that will uh, that will just help out with a few things. So <clears throat> that's the first sort of change that we've made. Next one, like I say, I'm gonna use my initial dry brush with the Mechanica Sander Grey, and I'm gonna use uh, this, this medium masterclass dry brush. And again, all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm actually applying it, not thick, 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 but um, quite thickly. Next up, don't use toilet tissue. I would recommend for the dry brush now, with a dry brush, use something like a kitchen roll, something with a little bit of texture to it, so that when you're taking off, when you're taking off, um, when you're taking everything off, it's, it's not a, it's, you're not pulling it all off, you're just dry brushing it into the, into the texture, if you will. So as I'm getting my, as I'm getting my, my paint, I'm just, and this was actually, in all fairness, this is from you guys in the comment section, you know, just stuff that I thought I'd just try out, um, with this more of a, a texture, a texture type paper. And again, all I'm doing is I'm just, just small circles or big circles, but just circles into, into the model. Um, and then you can still have that brown hue in there, which is nice, in that brown hue. But again, you're, you'll see it come on. And you're not, you're not painting it in, you're kind of stippling, you're just kind of, oh! Jeepers creepers down. Come on. Bit embarrassing that. Let's put it in the next layer down. You're like not stippling per se, but you're just kind of a little bit of not a lot of pressure, but just brushing it in. And all those areas that your big brush can't get to, um, we can change it to the smaller brush. But it should get to most places in all fairness. It'll get to most places. Have a little look under the light. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Happy with that. Cool. And that's me kind of done with this this brush now, and I'll just clean that off. Okay, moving on. And we just use the usual routine. I'll go for this again because not that it hasn't nothing's changed. It's just I'd rather go with it for you guys so you can see it in real time it coming along and hopefully if you're doing this with us you can kind of see so same again paint on the brush and go back to your to your paper and just dry brush it off onto the paper instead of peeling it all off type of thing and then same again we're just gonna just get that in all the areas so you can really start to kind of see the change in colors and again we're not neat just circles on getting on this is probably the most important part of the slap job is this initial bit just getting it all in into all those little areas and again I'm like almost stabbing it in and then same again Get it on, just brush it into your texture paper. And then same again, we're just, just stabbing, 
So it's, it is it is like stippling really. You're just kind of stabbing it in all the areas, all the areas, just stippling it all in there. Into the cloak. Yeah, just nice. Just get it all in there. Okay. Remember, always going to go a little bit lighter than we expected with this. Okay. But again, as you can see, it's nothing neat. It's far from neat, I can tell you that. It's far from neat. Okay. Cool. Right. So this next one, that's like the main bit's done for it, really. I'm quite happy with that. So the next one, this is where we're going to start to kind of just leave the model where it is and just start to get all the, the highlights on it. So shake it off, as again, as always. Plenty on. Onto your palette, onto your paper, sorry. Dry brush it into the, dry brush it into your, into your texture paper. And then same again, all I'm doing is I'm just on the top, on the top. I'm not going up the model. I'm just going where the light is now starting to catch. And you're pressing a little bit, but just enough where you can just start to see the, See the paint take that effect, you know? No need to go underneath it. We're letting the light kind of do its job, okay? So at no point you need to go underneath, we just keep it completely and utterly to the tops, okay? Again, we'll go another little layer just to give it a bit more of a brightness. Remember, we're applying that bit of a stab. Stab, 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 stab. Dab, dab, dab. Stipple. Sorry, stippling, wasn't it? Stippling is what believer <coughs> the people call it. But again, just on the top, just stipple, which is like a dab and a twist. A dab and a twist. Dab and a twist and a dab and a twist. That's how we're doing it. A dab and a twist. Dab and a twist. But like I say, these brushes, because they're so rounded, they lend themselves really, really nicely to it. Um, I know that some people have said that these brushes are a bit pricey. But I think for what they are, they're all right. I know you can use a, a makeup brush, um, makeup brushes, but you want that rounded, soft tip to get your dry brush. And they're actually quite, they've got quite a nice feel to them in all fairness. But yes, this is what we want to be doing, okay? Just stippling, stippling, stippling. Stipple, stab and dab, whatever you want to call it. Right. <clears throat> Put that back, and then finally, the white scar on the end, okay? Little shake off, bit on the brush, and then again, back into my, back into my texture palette. And like I say, all we're going to do is we're just, just basically where the model is. We can even just, if you're not even sure, we'll just sun it up like this. And you can just, where all the light is, you can just go around the model. And just get them that way. Really capturing those last little bits. Okay. That's an easy way of doing it, or you can just, if, you're, if you've got the eye for it, just go over where you are. I mean, if you've got the eye for it, you're probably not watching a, a tutorial on Slap Chomp. You're probably edge height lining and doing loads of crazy stuff. But for you guys that are uh, wanting to learn the arts of Slap Chomp, you're probably here watching it. And there you are. That's what your model's gonna look like in the end. Say, so, all done, ready to go. Like I say, uh, a newer way, not a newer way per se, but definitely uh, an updated way of of painting the model um, or prepping the model ready for, ready to go into our actual painting. All right. Lamian, Lamian medium or Lamian, yeah, Lamian medium. Let's go Lamian medium is what I'm going to use because I'm going to use pretty much with Lamian now with um, all of the paints I'm going to use for this. 
So throughout I was always using water, but for this I'm going to change it up. Again, wet your dry brush, take the water off. Get your wet palette, make sure you're using a wet palette. Okay, and again, all we're doing is just making sure we've got a little bit of paint on. Now I'm gonna use a cloak here. And I'm just gonna show the ways that you can use a slight, oh, excuse me, jeepers, a bit of a wet blend. Wet blending, I don't know if it's wet blending or not. I'm just, the ways that you can use slap chop to create different effects. So what I want is to create a slight reddish brown. So again, I've got my, almost like a, a a one-to-one -one mix of Lamy and medium and and paint all right so again I want this to be as I you know nothing's really changing in the front of um, watered down uh, or not watered down but um, not straight out the pot so again all I'm doing straight on to the model where it's pooling we just move the paint around Okay, we just move the paint around. And again, this will be a couple of layers. Okay, this will be a couple of layers. Okay, so all I'm doing, as you can see, is just moving the paint around. And for some reason, I, I don't, it just feels like it just goes on a little bit better than straight water. Some people may disagree, um, or some people may say, yep, I found the same thing. You know, so let us know which one you found to be um, which one you found to be better. But yeah, Lamia Medium just in the cloak. Okay, I'll go through the cloak with you as one of the updates for like what we've been doing. All right, just going in there. And then I'll go through a bit like the, the crude skin type thing. And also why it's been quite important to have the... the um, the base so light because it'll make sense when we're applying on his sort of like turtle skin would that be right I don't know what the best way to just to call that bit would be but yeah so all we're doing like I say a couple of layers we've got the Lamium medium and I'm using what am I using here I'm using uh, flesh terrace red flesh terrace red okay flesh terrace red for this okay flesh terrace red all right flesh terrace red uh, and then what we're probably going to do, we're probably going to apply a Saigor brown, but a really thin down Saigor brown after this. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on doing that. Like I say, a couple of layers, get a nice look to it, using the one-to-one -one of Lam Lamian medium and Flesh Terrors red. So with that done, as you can see, I mean, I, I think that just, it, it, it's gone on actually really, really quite nicely. There's a, a couple of layers there. There's a couple of layers on him. Um, which I think lends itself to looking rather nice. And so what we're going to do now, we're going to apply um, like a, a the Saigor brown, but with um, a good few bits of Lamia medium again. And this is almost going to be like a like a bit of a, a not I suppose like a glaze consistency, because Saigor brown is such a it's such a dark colour. And if you put it on, as I've said in many videos before, if you put it on too much, you will just, it will just go to, and it's hard to recover from it. You'll have to almost start again, almost. But again, as you can see, there's a couple of parts, Lamia medium to one part, Saigo brown. And all I'm doing is again, I'm just going over the model just to give it a bit of a, a darker color. And that will just sit nice in the recesses um, and it will leave you, Again, and you can go as dark or as light as you want with this. Go as heavy as you want, but all you're doing is just going over the model and just letting this just sit where it needs to sit. It just gives the model just a bit more of a, a, a brownish hue to it. I think really just breaks it up quite nicely. Gives it a bit more of a grim dark look. That Saigo brand, it's almost like the, I'm going to throw it out there, it's almost like the Agrax Earth shade of the contrast paint world. That's right, I said it, it's the, the contrast paint liquid talent equivalent, I think. And it looks great, I think, when you're doing 
the kind of models that uh, need a bit more of a a bit of more of a grim dark feel to it. We just want to add a bit more of a, a brownish hue. So there you go. So as you can tell, that's just made it a bit more, a bit, just a little bit more. I don't know what word I'm looking for there. And then when we come to apply the, and then when we come to apply the, the Zandri dust at the end, which still doesn't change, feathered touch, that'll pop that out nicely. So, continuing on, uh, let me find my note, skeleton horde. Where are you? You silly goose. Skeleton horde. We can pretty much apply skeleton horde straight, straight from the pot. Okay, add a little bit there of. Uh, we can add a little bit of lamy medium if you want to. That's okay. But to be honest with you, we're pretty much going to go straight. Add a bit more. There we go. That's going to be absolutely perfect. And again, for those sort of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle bits, we're just going to pop those in there. Good old, I know I've, uh, I always say work light to dark, and I put the red on, but for demonstration purposes, we've gone with that. Uh, a little bit in the beak there. And again, this will just make sense. But as you can see, hopefully, that's that's definitely now that we've applied much better layering with our brush at, at the start. That's just given it the hue and the pop that we want, like we did with the Cadian shock troops. Okay, that's why that going that little bit lighter is so important. Next up, again, same again. Same application applied across the model. I'm going to use um, Camo Creed for his skin. And again, I'm going to use the Lamium Medium in this. So I'm just using, I'm just showing you different areas. Um, this isn't really a crude tutorial in essence. This is just a, these are the changes I've made. Um, if they work for you, please use them. Because um, they've definitely, I feel like they've definitely worked for me in making the model shine a bit more. All right, so I've got my camo green in there. And I think this this color scheme, just this this color, just lends itself really nicely to the, um, to the crude look, you know? Let me put that in there, a little bit in there. And again, like I say, we're just layering up. We always start Starting light, and then work to dark. All right, and again, this lamin medium really just helps it, I think, definitely helps it sit just a little bit, a bit nicer. And again, you can, you can just build and build and build and build and build until you've got the skin color that you've, you know, you've been after. All right, so, um, yeah. So hopefully you can kind of see that that's just sat a bit better, you know, the greens that we've used there. Um, yeah, that, that Lamium Medium is definitely, uh, definitely a huge improvement um, onto that. Um, so all we're going to do now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off the rest of the model uh, and get to the point where I'm going to do the, the, the dry brush. And I'll talk about a few little bits and pieces that I've done. Don't worry, uh, in future videos there will be uh, in more in-depth of doing crute. This is really just a kind of the changes that I've, I've made to my slap chop um, style of painting. Uh, and hopefully you guys are finding it useful. But yes, the key ones are definitely that dry brush at the start. The use of the lamy medium and of course the base, a base colour down to get a little bit more out of your model. Alright, so... Let's get to the part where I uh, get the Zandari dust on, or Zandri dust on. Righty, eh? Well, there he is. Just got to the point where I'm, uh, I'm now going to apply the dry brush. So, as we uh, discussed in this video, there's a few things we've added. I know the Lame medium, or Lamian medium, is definitely the one 
I would say to use. We always work light to dark. And I'd say I'll go into more depth about the skin tone stuff on a, on a separate video. But in essence, the Lame medium, I've almost said, you know, really using that to just let that the, the paint just start a little bit and then just build up the layers, I think works really, really nicely. So, without further ado, it's time for the Zandri Dust. And there is, I mean, there's, there's literally like no real change outside of I'm um, using my um, small dry brush as always. And again, um, I'm taking the, taking the paint off this time. I am taking the paint off, not rubbing it into the, into the palette. And again, take a bit off the thumb, but this has to be, and I mean, feather, feather touch. As you've said on all the videos, this is super light and you can always add more if you need to, okay? Always add more if you need to. And you'll see how it just starts to give it a little bit of a hue. But again, we're, we're not pressing in hard. It's a real gentle, all over the model, feathered touch. Okay. And it will just start to just break up the colors nicely. You know, at the ends of these of his feathers, just everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Don't be afraid to get it on the base, okay? Because that'll be what we'll be doing in a bit anyway. All right. Now, I would, so you can go a little bit harder on the bottom of the cloak because of the sort of theme that I've got running here. That it's going to be like a a deserty type theme. What we can do is we can just go a bit of a stipple and we can just go a little bit more at the bottom of his cloak just to give him that dusty effect when he's taking a knee or something. He's got a bit of dust in his thing. And you can do the same thing around the feet as well. You can go a little bit dusty, a little bit more, a little bit harder, just to give his that dusty effect in the kit. So it's just at the bottom, we're just pressing down a little bit more. And then when we go back to everything else, we're nice and light, nothing wild, nothing crazy, okay? All right, so no real change there, really. No real change when it comes to the the dry brushing effect that we add, just to dull down the model a little bit and stop it looking so blotchy. All right. And then of course I'll do the metallics as I always do. Um, again, this is not really part of the of the um, the 2.0, if you will, for Slap Chop. It's just those sort of three main bits that we spoke about earlier. So I suppose without further ado, we'll get to the bit where the model's all finished and we'll just retouch over those little bits again that we discussed. All right, too easy. Okay, there he is, all done and complete. As you can see from uh, a lot of the other slap chop videos we've done, a lot more vibrant in colour. Uh, you can just see the back of the of the kit there. Like I say, it just lends itself much nicer, a lot more vibrant. Yeah, much better. So like I say, base, if you're doing something like these neutral colours, a brown, if you've got blues, I'd probably go like a, a dark blue. Reds, I'd probably even go brown with a with a red look or even a dark, dark red. But yeah, neutral colours, get yourself a, a dark brown. Like I say, the Army Painter brushes um, that I've been using have been, oh, hang on, there you go. The Army Painter brushes have been really, really good for um, for this type of painting. And then of course, switching over to the uh, Lamian medium technical. A uh, few changes there that I've made that have definitely made the slap chop um, much better.
So yeah, if this video has helped, as always, give it a, a thumbs up, leave a comment if you've uh, enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.